the thunderstorms crashed and the rain poured as two biracial young men burst from their car doors, hopped over puddles, and ran up the walkway to take cover on the porch of an all too familiar stranger's house. We stood sheltered from the rain, but still dripping wet with soaked socks that make your shoes make that nasty squishy sound every time you take a step. Stretched out shirts from ring the excess water from its fibers, and worst of all, fogged up glasses that are impossible to properly clean with a wet t-shirt. Just as one may dream of standing on the doorstep of their lifelong hero's house, clothed in only their finest suits or dresses, there I stood at my hero's home with my faithful but hello tennis shoes that had worn down holes, shorts that were beginning to sag from being so waterlogged, my first ever but admittedly poorly tie-dyed t-shirt, and of course, the largest smile you may have ever seen on my face. There I stood on the doorstep of Martin Luther King Jr.'s childhood home. My friend and I made sure to do all the things you're supposed to when visiting such a monumental site, such as discuss its significance in history, read all the plaques and information provided, and most importantly, just before leaving the spiritual-like location, we made sure to ground the experience with a selfie. Just as we began to walk down the porch steps, discussing what we would have for dinner, a 92-year-old man slowly swung the front screen door open and said, Now I hope you didn't come all this way just to stand on my steps. I turned to look over my shoulder in a watery concoction of longing, sorrow, joy, and disbelief began to fill my eyes then stream down my cheeks. Running like a child that has not seen his mom or dad for the past 53 years, I could not help but wrap my arms around this old man and tell him how much I missed him. Tell him how much he has done for me, my brothers, sisters, and friends across the world. Tell him how proud he would be of all 44 million of us black and brown grandchildren in this country. Tell him how we love whoever our hearts desire, no matter the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Tell him how he has shaped the fate of my existence as a biracial boy from a taboo to a warm embrace from white and black folk alike. Tell him how there are roughly 1,000 streets, more than 100 schools, and one national holiday dedicated to your vision of equity, tolerance, and peace among all people. Tell him how Barack Hussein Obama served as our country's leader for not one, but two historical full terms. Then tell him how there is another multicultural representative on her way to DC and Kamala Harris. Tell him that we are still working step by step day by day and piece by piece to summit that mountaintop and lay our eyes on the promised land. Tell him, tell you, that we are not quite ready as a nation to sing that old Negro spiritual. But we can hear it in the distance. We can feel it in our hearts. And we can even make out the words. And I know you said you may not get there with us. But sir, when we get there, the truth is we could not have made it without you. And when we stand in the valley of the promised land, although you may not be able to hear freedom ring from coast to coast, or capable to join hands with all of God's children, or even begin the singing, you will be there in the warmth of our hearts, in the spirits of our voices, as we sing, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last.